when I first ran for mayor, geez, so almost 10 years ago, uh, I was campaigning with former Commissioner Brian Miller at Lassing Green. And uh, I knocked on uh, John Medford's uh, neighbor's door. And the first question that she asked me was, what is your position on C2? Well, I didn't know what the heck she was talking about. I thought that was an explosive. You know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm off by two. So, but uh, I, what Brian said was she means the development uh, from down Route 42 from Kroger's to the Plan Center of Union. The 1999 town plan design, uh, design, uh, designated this to be a green space so to distinguish Union from Florence. This resident, like most others that I talked to during that campaign, was dead against any development on that stated roadway. The reason residents did not want uh, Union to be developed along Route 42 with all kinds of different retailers like Florence, uh, thereby turning our city into another Florence. Now, no offense to Florence, but uh, uh, that's, that's the fear. When uh, I campaigned last year, and, I, and believe me, I knocked on a lot of your doors, uh, the uh, union not being Florence attitude still exists in union and remains a primary uh, issue to all those that live here in union. When the developer came uh, to the city with their grand plan, for the uh, promenade development in 2021. Uh, the plan was portrayed by the developer as a residential mix of high-end uh, apartments and patio homes, as well as an entertainment district uh, that would feature higher-end sit-down restaurants, liquid refreshment establishment, bars, uh, and professional office and higher-end retail. This district would make the union residents uh, this or let me say this, this, this district would make it so that union residents would not have to go out of town to go out to eat, to go to liquor freshman establishments, or to go to professional offices for appointments, like having to go to Cincinnati to medically treat their children, AKA a village atmosphere that would be work, live, and play district. This district would be the highlight of Northern Kentucky area because there would be no place like it. The developer's website discussed, uh, uh, was discussed at our public hearing, and that website states, Union's new planned entertainment district, a full lineup of upper-scale restaurants and entertainment venues within this entertainment district. All road, all, and it said other things, and then all road uh, front, frontage lots on 42 will have restaurant, retail, and entertainment venues. This was the promise. There's one caveat to this promise. United Dairy Farmers was, a, was the anchor store because they provided a promenade backer financing and uh, UDF was promised uh, to build in lot one. It was promised that lot two through 11, which 11 by Fowler Creek, would be the stated entertainment district. Based on this promise, I voted for the promenade development with a UDF store. I have always and always will compliment the developer and TJ Shuddy for bringing Cincinnati Children's to the promenade. I, I, <coughs> I, I commend them for that. Cincinnati Children's asked, among other considerations, that the planned building structure on lot two be put on the other side of that lot. So if one is standing on Route 42, they could clearly see children's, uh, AKA a view shed. This is not a big deal because it did not really disrupt the plan, building and parking lot on each lot plan format, which promotes an entertainment venue. According to TJ Ackerman's major concept change submission narrative, he states on page two, second paragraph, the grocery tenant that uh, the view shed modified so that their uh, building may be built entirely on lot two. This was requested by the grocery tenant, not children. Uh, this, accommodate, this would accommodate their prototype building of 19,432 square feet and an appropriate parking area to accommodate their patrons on lot three. This completely change, uh, this, this change completely blocks lot two's view 
uh, shed to children. If one was standing on in front of lot three, in, in uh, the straight ahead view uh, is children's parking lot. As Tom Breinstein uh, uh, stated and pointed out at the public hearing, you can see a sea of parking spaces. Additionally, the proposed parking field uh, impedes walkability of the entire development as stated uh, Thursday night. The developer claims that if you stand kitty corner to lot three, you can see children's building when driving south on 42. But what about those driving north on 42? <laughs> Cincinnati Children's asked for a clear view shed on lot two. The current application negates that condition. Now, what if the grocer applicant goes out of business? It was clearly stated on Thursday that there are a limited number of retail resident retailers uh, to fill that empty space if by chance this premise occurs because we have to think of these things. The revised building structure would not, in my opinion, be conducive to be converted back to an entertainment location as it was planned. Mr. Pavese uh, testified on Thursday that he would rather have an empty building uh, than an empty lot. I disagree. I would rather have the right development per the developer's entertainment district promise than try to fill an empty building that has limited use prospects. On Thursday night, the developer's architect, Bob Koch, tried to make the grocer's applicant 19,432 square foot building seem smaller by comparing it to Kroger's marketplace. The proposed 19,432 square foot building would be larger than any of the other planned individual buildings in the uh, promenade retail section, section by 2.3 times. The other individual buildings a lot ranges from 6,000 square feet to 12,108 square feet, which if you average them all out, that's 8,200 uh, or 8,236 8, square feet. In comparison to the approved planned individual stores, this indeed uh, is a big box store in that comparison. Additionally, delivery truck traffic for a grocery store is not consistent with uh, delivery vehicles that are anticipated for smaller individual buildings as identified on the existing approved development concept plan. If the commission grants uh, this request, it will most likely open the floodgates to other developers wanting to do the same thing on other lots, introducing more bigger box stores. When this happens, C2 wins, and the promenade becomes just another retail strip center, and the promised entertainment concept for the district will be gone forever. And yes, Union will be a step closer to developing to, uh, like Florence, no offense to Florence. Finally, this is all about keeping promises by maintaining the structure and integrity of the promenade retail, not introduce big box stores into the promised entertainment district. My mother always told me that if you make a promise, keep it. Promises made, promises kept. So here is my position. I will fully support and will do whatever I can to support any promenade recruited retail that fulfills the developer's promise to make uh, the promenade uh, to make the promenade unions plan our unions new planned entertainment district. I'm not in full support of any future promenade uh, recruited retailer that does not fulfill the entertainment promised uh, uh, by the developer, and it is that simple. So that is my position uh, on this issue. I turn to uh, Commissioner Medford. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 